So here we are right here with the 46th sabbatical reading and feeding that's known right here, number 46, in Dihim Yohonam. In Dihim Yohonam, on the Hebrew, Aikev, or Akev, Akev, Akev. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, to Deuteronomy 11, 25. Now, in the IOTA software, the Kutara Matinya, the study of the verse, it begins at Orit, as you see, Orit uh, Zedagim, chapter 7, verse Kuteras Rahu, letter says, And Dihim Yehonav, Yehichin, Ferd Semte, Bitter Tebkat, Bitadurgatim, Kama, Amlakih, Egziabihir Labatochih, Yamalawin, Al Kidanina Mehiret, Le ante yet a big lahal, yet a big lahal. Now, the King James, below we have the King James, and this is from the IOTA Bible um, software that utilizes, thankfully, His Imperial Majesty's um, Heart Bible um, and compares it comparatively with the King James Version, which is actually the way when we first. I got to recognize His Majesty's Bible is the Book of the Seven Seals. That's how we studied it. So this program also has software which features side by side both the Amharic and the English. Now the verse that begins off this 46th um, parasha or kufl is Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, where it says, "Wherefore it shall come to pass if ye hearken to these judgments and keep and do them." that the Lord thy God shall keep to thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear to thy fathers. Now, what is also beloved about this and very useful about this particular study software here, because when we go to the Bible of Bible, we do the same thing, but this is in this particular software, which is mainly for um, Amharic readers. You understand? In order to even, as you see, the tabs are Bamarinya. You understand? And we're at Kutir uh, Matinya, or the verse, the study of the verse. Now it has the KJV with the Strong's numbers. Now, when you go to the first um, link, it brings up this right here Ekeb or Aikeb. Aikeb. Ekeb or Aikeb. Ashkenazi, Polish, and German Jews, they say, Aikev, Aikev, Aikev. But now the meaning of it, when you go to Strong's, is uh, 6118, and it's from the 6117 in the sense of the 6119, it means a heel, figuratively, the last of anything used adverbially in the sense of forever, also result, i.e. compensation, and so. It has these meanings, and so, like an adverb with preposition or relatively. It can also mean on account of, on account of X or because, by, end of, for, if. Now, you see, it's been translated as if, you understand, reward, like if, in the sense of some sort of reward. Now, why it's important to really understand this is because here we're at in Deuteronomy. Here's where it begins our particular reading for this 46 um, sabbatical um, reading and feeding, or what we call the RSS, Rastafari Sabbath Studies, or, or um, Sabbath Scrolls. And the scroll right here, as we go here and look at our chart, we see that the 46 is in Dihim Yohonah. In the brackets, we have the Hebrew, Ekev, Ekev, or Aikev is how it's usually spelled. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 25. Now, let's see if we could bring up this, um, this particular um, window uh, right here and um, on the Wikipedia. Now, if you go to the Wikipedia, and we mentioned it before, but if you put Ikev, you understand? You see Ikev. If you put Ikev right here, right? 
like it is right here in our chart, you take that second after the the the, the slash. You understand? You take I Kev E I K E V, and you put it into your search engine. You understand? And you look for the Wikipedia, uh, the so-called free encyclopedia. It has these various spellings right here, and it also has the Hebrew. As you can see, the Hebrew, the Hebrew for if in brackets you follow, or if you do such and such, or if such and such. This is the sense where in the Royal Amharic it says, in Dihim Yehonah, in Dihim Yehonah. So this right here is the Wikipedia page that sometimes we also utilize in our studies that explains that it's the second word and the first distinctive word in the Parsha, and it's the 46th weekly Torah portion. And it has the brackets there, Parsha, in the annual, they say Jewish, we say Ethiopian Hebrew, or the Hebraic cycle of Torah reading. And it's the third in the book of Deuteronomy. So this is the third reading, and it comprises Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, to Deuteronomy 11, 25. They say Jews, we say Ethiopian Hebrews and certain Orthodox Jews, because a lot of so-called Jews who are atheistic you know what I'm saying? And they don't keep the Al Kidan of the Barit. But Orthodox Jews and we as black Hebrews in diaspora generally read it in August. So what time is it? It's actually it's actually August. It's actually August thirteenth. You know what I'm saying? August thirteenth. So here's a summary of what is contained. You know what I'm And this is all on the free the so called free um uh encyclopedia, Wikipedia. And all you have to do is actually put in the the Hebraic terminology, you understand, for the name of a particular Torah reading, and you'll find it there. This is for students and those who are desirous to really go forward in their studies. Of course, some of the um, the pictures, as we can see, some of the pictures, and we've used some of these pictures as well in our videos. Some of the pictures are kind of you know whitewashed, so forth and so on. But that's not really significant. That's not the most significant thing once we recognize who we be, you understand, because we, by and by, that will be taken care of. But here it has six parts. One is the blessing of obedience. Secondly, it's the taking of the land. Thirdly, it's the golden calf. Fourthly, it's Aaron's death. Fifthly, it's the, the Levite's duty. And then sixthly, it's the exhortations to serve. Then they have certain inter um, biblical interpretations. You understand? Some additional interpretation. And here is a particular like summary account. And some of it is, is accurate, but I always like to study this along with actually what is you know, along with what is actually um, written in the scripture and then to compare it, you know, with um Amharic, you know, and like you said, you can see some of these um, this painting from 1659 is a Rembrandt painting of somebody who they want to claim is um, Moses. You understand? And here is another painting from 1907, the Golden Calf, an illustration from a Bible card published by the Providence Lithograph. Nobody said, why do all these people are, are fair skin? You understand? Not even pink skin. You understand? In that part of the world. You understand, nobody said I was racist because that was done during the times of the Gentiles. This is another picture right here. You understand, Moses receiving the tablets. As you can see, it's an 1868 painting by, by um, this is a Portuguese name. I don't really know too much Portuguese, so I'm not too sure how this is, um, how his name is pronounced, but the Costa painted that. But um, as you can see, this is a very useful site for those who are seeking to study, you know, study the Torah readings. And it's out there free. So I would say, you know, take advantage, you know, of it. This is another 1900 painting. So these are very recent paintings. You know, recent whitewash is addition to the other addition to whitewash. So when people are offended by us actually showing the people more like they were as black, we have to remember that it's hypocrisy because here's an 1890 painting. We use this in a particular video namely because very dramatic and they wasn't overemphasizing the 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 white the, the Europeanness of the people. So
so that was usable. But some of these we still utilize just as basic, you know, basic explanation here is Jehovah, some interbiblical interpretations, as you can see other pictures there and other pictures here. Who is this? This is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from 1863. It's like they are all feminine. You see everybody's the angels are female, white woman, and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego look a little bit um, strange there, to say the least. But anyway, more, more, you know, famous picture of Moses. You see this in all the videos. When I say Moses said this painting actually goes back to 1865 from La Santa Bible by Gustave Doré. Though we like Gustave's painting, some of his paintings right there, it's almost like he knew the truth. You can see he looks like a Rastafari or like a Ethiopian Hebrew right there. You understand? Gustave's paintings aren't too bad. But, um, there's, there's more at this site. We're just scrolling through this to give one an overview. But when you scroll all the way to the bottom of this site, if you go all the way to the bottom of this site, you understand, you will see that it has from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, it has all the weekly Torah portions. So you see all the weekly Torah portion. The one that is, is bold is actually this one, Aikev, you understand, or Ekev, Aikev, you understand, and then we have a couple of more, you understand, before we get to the, the, um, conclusion, you understand, of this particular Torah cycle. So what we want to focus on for a moment is just the name right here, the 46, Endihim Yohanan. You understand? Because as we go forward to the 40, um, to the 47th, it is, we call it Eneho, but it's called Re'e or Re'e. Now you can see that right here as the next one. You can see that as the next one right here. So this is a, a good um, reference study. But another, another thing we just want to bring to one's attention right here, this is something called the, the Humash, the Humash, or the, the Torah, the, the, the synagogue, the synagogue, um, the synagogue um, Torah right here is called the Humash. The Chumash, right? The synagogue Torah. The one that we prefer is this one. This is on the So Cinco or So Cinco, So Cinco Press. It was like a triple crown right there, but it's a tower actually, right? And we utilize this as well because this is here. It has the Hebrew. And it's interesting because when we look at this in the Hebrew and when we're able to read this, some read this as um, uh, uh, Vayahe. Uh, but, but it's really where, 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 ha, or the, ha, ya, the, ha, ya, the, ha, ya, according to the pointing. You see the dots pointing, right? And then here is the word. Here is the I, ev. They don't have a dot inside, so according to their way of reading Hebrew, force Hebrew, they would say it's not a V sound, but it's a B sound, according to these this Hebrew dotting, which is all very much light of day. But here is the parallel Hebraic uh, Jewish um, synagogue Torah. And the English side, which it begins this particular um, reading and feeding, at the bottom it tells you Ekeb. So here they have a K-E-B. So they read as E-K-E-B. This is why when you look at the wiki, um, going back to the wikipedia, uh, the Wikipedia Torah um, reading, you can see that at the Wikipedia Torah reading, it has a couple of the variations. And then it has the Hebrew right there. So a couple of the variations and the Hebrew. Now, bringing it back, bringing it back over here, it says, And it shall come to pass, because ye hearken to these ordinances, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep with thee the covenant and the mercy which he swore to thy fathers. Now, when you go to their um, commentary down here under Ekeb, it says, um, because ye hearken to these ordinances. Now, one of their Jewish uh, commentators, you understand, or rabbis and others who've 
expounded on various areas of scripture, E, one who is quoted as E, understands the text, if ye hearken to these ordinances, the reward in the end will be. And it says N renders as AJ also renders. And these are certain of their Jewish, um, Hebrew, or European Jewish um, authority, the sources that they reference. But generally speaking, once we look over the text, we can see that it is in, in um, conformity with the better and the best readings of this, because once again, going to the um, going to the 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 IOTA software and going to the Kutera Martinya, and here's where we had began began off. Um, this is Orit Zedagim, chapter seven. The beginning is in Dihem Yehona, right? In Dihem Yehona, that carries with it the sense of. I, I, ekeb, ekeb, or ikeb, ikeb. Now, once again, when you look through ikeb, they say it can mean a heel, though the last part of anything. What you can see in that uh, ikeb is actually the root of ya'ikob, ya'ikob, keba, keba. Not in the sense of just anointing, but in the sense of like there's a word in the Ethiopic called uh, wukabe, ukabe. Like a guardian angel is called a wukabe or ukabe. Depends on the dialectical speaking. Some say ukabe, some say wukabe, you understand? But you have uh, uh, ukabe, wukabe. This is the same root as ya'iko. So there's a link here. Remember, Jacob was named the heel grabber, you understand? So it has to do for heel. But in the sense of the Hebrew, here is a figurative sense. And it refers to the last of anything when it's used in an adverbial sense, in the sense of forever. Also, it's used in the sense of also a result, as in the indeed him. And like this, and like this, it will be, it will result, it will come, the compensation, or and so it will be. You understand? Adverb with the preposition or relatively on account of, on account of this, on account of that, by, and, for, it. Now, you notice something that uses that word if, excuse me, if here, and that's exactly how on the Wikipedia, you understand, and most, um, the Chabad and others also commentated like that. But the sense that we have here in the Chumash, you understand, when we go to the Chumash, one of the, he says right here, understand the text, if ye hearken to these ordinances, the reward in the end will be. Now, though they say ekeb, ekeb, what they often um, leave out is the so-called um, vehaya, vehaya, or wahaya, wahaya, and it will be, it will come to pass, it will hone, it will haya. Like like from Yahweh, it will be, it will come to pass. The real sense is the Vahaya Ekev, Vahaya Ekev, Vahaya Ekev. This now corresponds to what we have here and what we presented here in our sabbatical chart as in Dihim, the fuller sense, in Dihim, Yehonah, instead of just if, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just if, as we see on the um, on the Wikipedia, you know what I'm saying? On the Wikipedia site, under Ikev, right here, under Ikev, they say Ikev like that, Ekev like that, Ekev like that, or E Q E B, which is probably the the better sense. The E pronounced as an I sound, or Akeb, 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 the Hebrew for if you follow. So now they interpret it in a strange sense here. We don't really agree with this sense on the Wikipedia or the Wikipedia right here. They say it's the second word, and it's the first distinctive word in the Parsha. You understand? It was the first word that's almost like a noun in a sense. They discount the verb. But the verb is very important to us understanding this, and it's a good thing that we can 
understand this Hebrew for ourselves. That's why Hebrew is one of our, you know, one of our main languages, Rastafari. I was happy to see Sizzler and some of the other um, Bobo Shanti and other Rastafari, you know, um, learning, learning Hebrew. Because really when we learn the Hebrew, we learn that this right here is read by how forced modern Jewish Hebrew teaches us how to read in more of a sense like um, Vahaya, 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 or Vahaya Ekev, or Ekev. This, you see that bracket, that, 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 that slash right there? That's to separate it. So when they say the first distinctive word, they are forgetting this part because really this part has the sense, as it says right here, has the sense of, uh, of the reward or the result or it will be like this for you. It will come to pass. It will be. I think that's very important to really understand the full sense that ekev should really be vahaya ekev. Not just a single word, but that's a key word. But the vahaya or wahaya is very important. And this is one of the reasons for those um, more advanced students that may say, well, you have two words right here, but there's one word in the Hebrew. You understand? And... It says if. How does if correspond to this? You understand? Know well, if corresponds to it, especially in the IOTA and the IOTA studies and software. Once again, returning to that, the IOTA studies right here, which is the strong. See, all this is based right here on the on the um, strongs, the King James version with the with the um, strongs number, and we had clicked on the sixty eight. This is the IOTA software, the 6811, where it says, Wherefore, it shall come to pass, if it shall come to pass. So this whole phrase really is a proper descriptor for this one word when you put it into more of a context. Just saying if, which you notice is the second to last, according to the Strong's 6111, is ignoring the contextuality of it. In other words, and the result. A better would be also, or the result will be. You understand? The result will be, it will be like this. In fact, here the King James is pretty good, you understand, in what it says. Um, the idea of, because it's, it's not a literal translation, but it's the context of what is being said. In Dehim Yohanam, wherefore it shall come to pass if. You understand? That the, the ifiness is not so much there, but since the Yohanam speaks to that it will be, it may be, it will be, also has a sense, and as them hard speakers will tell you, Yohanam has a sense that it will be, or it might be. It depends on the context of it. We just thought this was very important for us to touch on as we're in this 46 um, sabbatical Torah reading, Ikev, Ekev, and as it's a final, a final um, show and tell, this is the Metaf Kedus of His Imperial Majesty, and we get to verse, um, verse uh, 12 right here. We find it. Um, in Dehim, as we see right here, in Dehim Yehonah, that first word, in Dehim Yehonah. And then there is a colon. There's an Ethiopic colon right there. You know what I'm saying? In Dehim Yehonah. Then it goes, Yehichin Ferd Semte Bitit Ebkat, Bitabergatim, Akama, Am Lakih, Egiziarihir, Le Abatochih, Yaman Lawin. Al Kidanana Meheret Leante Yet Abik Yet Abik Yet Abik Lehav. And then there is another colon here, and then it begins verse Asava Source. You understand that number that Ahaz there uh, is actually 13, and this is 12. And if you look at the layout of the Met of Caduce of His Majesty, it begins a separate bait here. So more to come on this, my brothers and sisters. Yeah, willing. Shalom.